Shout out to Squarespace for sponsoring today's video. We listened. We challenged all conventional thinking. Back in 1995, Chrysler introduced two look-alike four-door sedans, the Dodge Stratus and Chrysler Cirrus, followed up a year later with a third look-alike, the Plymouth Breeze. Collectively known as the Chrysler Cloud Cars, they were another step away from Chrysler's boxy K-Car past, winning awards for Motor Trend and Car and Driver. But after a few short years, the accolades subsided, with the Stratus the only one to survive to a second generation, and nearly all of them have disappeared from our roads today. This is the story of the Chrysler Cloud Cars, the Dodge Stratus, Chrysler Cirrus, and Plymouth Breeze. This is my old car. And at every turn, we not only asked why, we asked, why not? New Dodge Stratus. We questioned everything. Thanks again for all the suggestions to feature the Chrysler Cloud cars. My wife owned a Stratus back in the 90s, during a time when we each went through several Dodge vehicles, as I owned a first-gen Intrepid back then. We both liked the look of the Stratus, and although it looks very dated now, the general styling direction Chrysler was moving towards in the 90s was some of the most daring that I think they ever did before or since. It's not just a step above, it's the new plateau. Before I continue with today's episode, I would like your input on some ideas I have for future episodes. I would like to try some top 10 lists, but have the rankings based on your votes. The same rules I follow for my regular episodes would apply here, meaning the cars chosen must have existed from the 80s to mid-2000s, and the model can no longer be in production today. For my first top 10 list, the category will be Worst Subcompact Car, a nod to my very first Mile Car episode, the Chevy Chevette. Send in your vote via the comments or an email, and be sure to include the words Worst Subcompact Car along with your suggestion. I also will start a topic on my community page where you can post your suggestion there as well. Now back to today's episode. Everybody needs a Hugo sometime. When it comes to passenger cars, if you mention Chrysler, Anyone who knows anything about car history will likely first think of the cars that helped get Chrysler through their 1980s bankruptcy, the Dodge Aries and Plymouth Reliant. Sleek, new styling that will captivate you. And became the first Chrysler K cars. And in case you're wondering, no, I haven't devoted a My Old Car episode to them yet, but hopefully coming soon. Although the K cars were extremely popular when they first debuted, they also fit the trend of many cars of the early 80s, which can be summed up in one word, boxy. As the 80s progressed, Chrysler didn't stray far from the boxy K-Car design, including the mid-sized Dodge Spirit and Plymouth Acclaim that debuted in 1989. It's European. No, I think it's American. I mean, look at the lights. It's Japanese. No, this is an American car. But by the early 90s, the boxy look was so 80s, and Chrysler was well underway with an all-new styling trend with the Dodge Intrepid, which launched in 1993. The Intrepid introduced a design which Chrysler called Cab Forward, which really was just stretching the windshield farther over the front hood. But what it wasn't was boxy, and the Intrepid, along with its LH platform siblings, the Chrysler Concorde and Eagle Vision, were a big hit. So naturally, many of their later 1990s cars took on a similar look. Intrepid. This changes everything. Once the Intrepid came along, the rest of the Chrysler lineup suddenly looked old and out of date, especially Chrysler's mid-sized four-door sedans, the Dodge Spirit, Plymouth Acclaim, Maybe a Plymouth Acclaim. Nice idea. and Chrysler LeBaron. The latter also offered a two-door coupe and convertible, which were more popular, but were on a different platform, so they really only shared the LeBaron name. All three sedans were slated to end for the 1994 model year, and the replacements continued the exodus away from boxy cars. In 1992, Chrysler released their first concept for the Chrysler Cirrus, which took the then-futuristic look of the Intrepid to new extremes. Introduced in 1994 as 1995 models, the Chrysler Cirrus, followed soon after by the Dodge Stratus, were initially heralded as fresh and innovative, earning a spot on Car and Driver's Top 10 list and earning Motor Trend's Car of the Year. This despite losing a lot of the innovation that was seen in the concept. That concept had rear suicide doors and no B-pillars, and admittedly the loss of that design feature in the production model was expected. But the concept also was supposed to have a 400 horsepower V8, and the production model fell way short of that. The production model, which was based on Chrysler's JA platform, was definitely curvier than 80s Chrysler's. If you remember this Dodge ad from the 90s, with what was probably groundbreaking CGI at the time, and I think still holds up very well today, it made all the Dodge cars, including the Stratus, look way cool. As was typical back then, the Chrysler brand was intended to be the luxury model, whereas the Dodge was the more sporty, but also less expensive option. 
Their cloud theme names also identify the car's ranking, so to speak, since stratus clouds sit lower in the Earth's atmosphere as compared to cirrus clouds. Although that higher versus lower cloud theory wasn't followed outside of the United States, such as in Europe, where the Dodge brand isn't sold and instead was sold as a Chrysler Stratus up until the year 2000. Back in the US, on the outside it was clear the Stratus and Cirrus were the same car. Only the grille, tail lamps, and badging could tell them apart. The grilles in particular continued a style trend for each brand that continued with the third generation minivans that started up a year later. On the inside, the Stratus and Cirrus were nearly identical as well, with just the emblem on the steering wheel to tell the driver which car they were in. Most interior options matched across both, although across different trim names and packages, the only exception being leather seats as an option in the Cirrus. When it came to engine and transmission choices, the cheaper Stratus got a 2-liter 4-cylinder and manual transmission standard, which could be upgraded to a 2.4-liter automatic that was standard in the Cirrus. Both cars could also be had with a 2.5-liter V6, and an optional auto stick that allowed manual shifting without a clutch pedal. Thanks to their recent Automotive Press Awards and decent sales, the Plymouth brand also wanted in on the action, but of course spending as little as possible. The result was the Plymouth Breeze that debuted later in 1995 for the 1996 model year. Although the name Breeze isn't a type of cloud, there really wasn't any other decent cloud-based names left to use. Could you imagine the Plymouth Cumulus? Same as its Dodge and Chrysler twins, the Breeze only differed visually with the tail lamps and badging, and a grille that now matched the new Plymouth Voyager. Since Plymouth was the value brand, no V6 was offered, and the best trim was called the Expresso, a common trim name on all Plymouths at that time. Sales over the next few years stayed relatively stable for the Stratus, selling close to 100,000 each year from 1995 to 2000, its final year for its first generation. But the same couldn't be said for the Cirrus, with around 60,000 sold its first year, but only reaching half that each year after. The Breeze did a little bit better, but when rumors began to circulate in 1999 that the Plymouth brand was soon going to be on the chopping block, sales tanked for its shortened and final 2000 model year. The new line of Plymouths, what will they come up with next? In the late 90s, replacement cloud cars were in the works, but ultimately only one would survive, the best selling of the three by far, the Stratus. The new model, now called the JR platform, had a revised rear end that shared a more than passing resemblance to the then popular Dodge Intrepid. The Stratus still shared a car with the Chrysler brand, but Chrysler renamed it to the Sebring, the same name it had already been using on its two-door coupe and convertible, which by the way, were themselves two different cars. The Sebring coupe shared a platform with the Mitsubishi Eclipse, whereas the sedan and convertible were on the new JR platform. Dodge also expanded the Stratus name for the 2000 model year to also be sold as a coupe model, replacing the Dodge Avenger and sharing the same two-door Mitsubishi coupe platform with the Sebring. Wow! This continued name sharing across different cars, like they did with the Sebring, to me at the time just seemed confusing, because they were clearly different cars. <laughs> I don't know if you meant to do that. But presumably they did this because of the popularity of the model names that sold well. And initially that worked well for the Stratus, with its best sales year of almost 110,000 in 2002 and stayed near 100,000 each year through 2005. But by 2006, with the introduction of the Dodge Charger, the focus shifted away from the smaller and lower selling Stratus, resulting in 2006 being its final sales year. The Sebring managed to hang on longer for a third generation in 2007, and will probably get its own mile car episode at some point. Today, the likelihood of spotting any of the original cloud cars, at least where I live, is practically non-existent. I drive a Dodge Stratus! But when they were new, I generally thought it was a cool car and it was the right size car for young families like mine, who maybe already had or didn't want a minivan, since SUVs weren't as mainstream as they are today. As I said before, I think the cloud cars arrived during Chrysler's best years in terms of design. Much of the Chrysler we know in the 90s is gone. In a lot of ways, that's a good thing, but I can't help missing some of it today. Now we'd like to show you our stripped down model. Thanks for watching. If you like this video, click the like button and subscribe to my channel. If you once owned a car from the 80s to mid 2000s that you rarely see today and would like it featured in a future episode, leave a reply in the comments or contact me at the email shown here. See you next time. Thanks again to Squarespace for sponsoring today's episode. You can create your own website with Squarespace's powerful and beautiful online platform and connect with your audience and generate revenue through gated members only content. 
You can manage your members, send email communications, and leverage audience insights, all on one easy to use platform. And grow and engage your audience with Squarespace email campaigns. With Squarespace, you can create powerful email content that matches your website with your existing products, blog posts, and logo, so your messaging is consistent and effective. Squarespace websites are optimized for mobile, so your content automatically adjusts so your site looks great on any device. And you can use customizable galleries to display images and videos in unique ways. Go to squarespace.com for a free trial. And when you're ready to launch, go to squarespace.com myoldcar to save 10% off your first purchase of a website or domain.